now that we've looked at an expanded frequency distribution, how can we use it? What is it good for? Well, one of the things that we can make by using one of the parts of an expanded frequency distribution is called a frequency polygon. So here we go, frequency polygon, that's what we're going to make. Um, when you think polygon, you probably think of a shape, you know, square, rectangle, pentagon, something like that. Um, and then we're going to create something similar to that, but this is a frequency polygon. So this is what, this is what we do. Um, when we create a frequency polygon, we are going to focus on the midpoints of our distribution. So I'm going to focus here on the midpoints. And what I've done is I've taken each one of these midpoints, 25.5, 75.5, 125.5, all the way down to 325.5, and I've put them into a display here. Down at the bottom, I've got my midpoints for each of my classes. So I could label this down at the bottom as class midpoints. class over here. Class midpoints. And on my on the, the vertical axis, I've got the frequency. Over here is the frequency. So for each class, I've got the midpoints at the bottom along the horizontal axis. And on the vertical axis, I've got the frequency. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dots at each midpoint and the with the appropriate frequency. So if we go back, this class had a midpoint of 25.5, and its frequency was 12. So I'm going to put a dot right there. So 25.5, the frequency was 12, right about here is my dot. And then I continue to do that. Now I'm going to go a little bit faster. The next one is 18, and then 7, and then 9. And I know that I'm going with consecutive midpoints. So 18, 7, and 9 are going to be the next ones. So this one up here is going to be 18. And then at 125.5, I've got 7, which puts me right about here. And then 9 at 175.5. 9 is right about there. Let's get the rest of them in there. Uh, the last three are 5, 6, and 10. So at 225, I go 225.5, I go to 5. At 275.5, I go up to 6. And then finally, at 325.5, I go up to 10. So there's all of my dots, but I'm not finished. I said that I'm making a frequency polygon, and I haven't created any kind of polygon. There's no shapes here. It's just a bunch of dots. So what do I need to do to create a polygon? Well, I connect the dots. So I connect the dots as I go. There we go. But I still haven't created a polygon. Remember, a polygon is like a shape. It's enclosed. Uh, a rectangle has four sides, and all four of the vert vert vertices touch each other. They connect. So how can I turn this into a frequency polygon? Well, what I then do at the end, after I connect all of the dots, is I take the dots, the dots that I have on the ends, and I connect them to the horizontal axis. So there we go. I have now created a frequency polygon. And you should go to maybe the next, you know, the next one down. Okay, so there's my frequency polygon, the next midpoint that would be on either side, or you can just go to zero. Like in this case, I'd be going into the negative, so I could just go to zero, or I could go all the way over here to negative 25.5 if I chose. Either way, I'm okay with that. Uh, when you create a frequency polygon. And now it's enclosed. I've got everything enclosed at the top, and then my horizontal axis creates the, the bottom side of my frequency polygon. And there it is. And then you can use that to analyze your data.